to Bangalore, uh, to one and few of the reputed institutions, have opened my eyes. Now, there are a few things which have happened during my tour, but I would like to tell you something which is related to some important interview questions which are being asked in those premier institutes when somebody is going for a job as a physics teacher or something which is related to physics and mathematics. But in this video, I would be primarily focusing what are the interview questions, critical interview questions that are being asked when somebody faces a job either as a physics teacher or as a data scientist or something which is related to physics. Now these questions are something very crucial. They are not always related to subject like Lorentz transformation or thermodynamics or entropy. But these are very critical questions and I was fortunate that I was on the board when these interviews were being held and I have gathered few information I want to share with you. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. First thing that comes up as a question if you are going in a job as a physics teacher or into math or as a, as a, as a uh, something related to physics is that are you a certified physics teacher? Now I would like to tell you that why the recruiter is asking the question then I will give you a sample answer to that. Now, when you are asking that are you a physics teacher the recruiter actually wants to know and giving you an opportunity to show your certification. So what you do is that you need to tell about your certification details. So what you do is that you start with the recent certification that you have done. For example, you have done any astrophysics course or anything from TIFR or something else. You tell about that, then you tell about your master's degree, so on. But remember one thing that if you are already a master's, you don't need to tell that you are 10 plus 2 or whatever your scores has been in, in, in your school 10 plus 2 etc. So you tell about your master's and graduation. If you are already a doctorate or you are doing a postdoctoral pursuing a PhD, then you tell about your PhD and that's about your master's, that's all. Because remember what matters is that the last in first out method. Whatever the certification is in, you tell about that and you then don't tell about those old certificates. Important point in here is that maybe you have certain other certificates which are not related to physics, but maybe related to science, microbiology or something. My advice would be not to talk on that. Because ultimately the recruiter or the principal of that school or institute would be interested in only, only physics teaching or jobs related to physics. So what you need to do is that you need to talk only about that which is related to physics. So question number one, I think it is clear, giving you an option, are you a physics teacher, show your certificates, start with the recent certificate, come up with the best certificates right at the beginning and then go back to masters or your uh, uh, graduation and do not talk about those certifications which are not related to physics because the recruiter is interested only in physics. That's the second question comes up right on your screen. What are the most important skills that you have as a physics teacher? Now here is a small catch. When you are going as a physics teacher or uh, anything related to physics, the person has already seen your resume, right? He or she already knows about your masters, your mathematical abilities, etc. So what the teacher uh, or the recruiter wants to know is about your communication skill. Right on your screen, I have given you an example. As a physics teacher, I believe that the most important skill to have is a strong communication, being able to communicate complex contexts in a very understandable way. So, you know, as a physics teacher, if I go as a gym instructor, obviously I know what are the things that I would do in order to, uh, you know, clear your fat or do the triceps and biceps, all, the, all those things. As a physics teacher, it is quite obvious that you will know physics, right? You know mathematics, you know complex details. But what are the most important skills the recruiter wants to know that can you communicate properly? Now, here communication doesn't mean English, Hindi, French, German. Communicate properly means complex concepts which are given. Can you communicate properly to the students? That is the next point would be how do you engage your students in your lessons? Now engaging the students in the lessons is something which has come up because nowadays I have seen the universities Cambridge, Calcutta, Jadavpur and Delhi University they really do not focus on this age-old method of doing the study and study and study. No. 
they want to engage even if you see the little kids uh, you know i see my daughter going to school well i've got a lot of activities to do in one way it is good activities actually engage the students and give them an understanding right on the screen i have given three more important points comfort of the students very important whether the students is comfortable or not second point hands on activities because physics is all about all those things you see around right this this sky this lake this green uh, trees so is it that there is certain kind of an hands on activities third is incorporating technology we have lot of technologies right we can use videos audios automation etc so i you can reply in this way i would also use technologies in order to incorporate so here is that this can range from using simulations to having students work on coding projects related to physics topics by doing this i'm able to keep my students engaged while introducing new technologies that means what you are trying to tell is that answering to this question engaging the students first would be the comfort of the students second would be hands on activities and third obviously without engaging or incorporating technology how can you become a proper physics teacher because it is not that you are just teaching on the orthodox and those boring concept you have to engage into technology so that clears the second question use technology give the comfort and engage them is activities because physics is all about knowing the world around this is a very important question what is your teaching philosophy now when somebody is asking you about your teaching philosophy what the recruiter or the principal wants to know is that how do you really teach what i i mean to say it is not about that you use mathematics you explain things complex things easy that's fine you're right on the screen you will see stories number 1 uh in my kind of a uh, uh, you know video making or in my classes i used to do and do a lot of storytelling techniques now say for example you are using uh, uncertainty principle for example people really don't know who was heisenberg people really don't explore about heisenberg so you start telling a little bit story about heisenberg and then you explain relativity using explain so you, even in your grad or undergrad uh, school uh, topics you can use stories next is interactive learning so how do you use the interactive learning tools peer teaching so i am a little bit less known person and here is another person who can teach so that is uh, interactive learning peer teaching third is relation to everyday life right today why i am sitting on this bench why i am not collapsing down uh, why my uh, wife is holding the camera right now and is her hands are not falling out of the bag it is all related to um, you know relation to everyday life so uh, how do you really teach physics and what is the philosophy of teaching is that i use relation to everyday's life and i try to do a comparison on that also i use lot of storytelling techniques i use inspiring stories right say for example isaac newton's immense uh, uh, you know concentration power working for 16 to 17 hours uh, peril man 7 years of seclusion to do uh, mathematics all these are inspiring stories and i can tell you if you can inspire your students your job is done most of the physics teacher they feel bored or the students i would say rather feel bored because they are not inspired why will they do mathematics why will they do analysis why will they do all those things because they are not inspired lastly coming is solving exercises obviously that is a part of the curriculum that you really solve exercises and last most important is what is called relationship building now you see nowadays there are there has always been a good teacher and a bad teacher but who is a good teacher it is not always that a good teacher can teach well somebody whom the students really love somebody whom there is a good relationship somebody where the students feel happy in confiding things in our school days our stud our teachers was to be like our next mom next mother where we used to, to laugh and even today i cry about my school days i miss those school days now why it is because of relationship so just to summarize you can use storytelling techniques you can use lot of interactive learning process through audio and uh, video and digital media use a peer teaching this is very common in us but unfortunately it is not here in india that is you can use the uh, i would say uh, one of your friend assigned to do a better peer teaching try to find out relation in everyday life things around you find inspiring stories going solving exercises 
and most importantly build up relation because at the end of the day it is all about relation the next question which is very important comes up right on your screen provide an example of time when you have to adapt a lesson which is due to lack of behavior of your understanding of the students now this is something which is very common because you will get a heterogeneous uh, batch you won't get all, everybody who is up to the same level so the what the prayer recruiter wants to know from you is that if you're willing to learn or if you're willing to adapt yourself are you ready for adaptation it is not that you get everybody who will understand everything so here is a sample answer to your uh, question i recently had a situation where i need to adapt my lesson plan due to student behavior during these uh, lessons some of the students were not paying attention to some of the lectures now you see here this is a classic example you are lecturing and the students are not paying attention especially in a physics class so what you do is that you stop the lecture right there and you find out that what is the problem you discuss with the students what is the problem around why they are not uh, uh, you know enjoying and then you can change the plan immediately you might uh, put them into a quiz you might engage them in certain activities you can take them in a lab or you can take them out in a park like this right so the what the recruiter wants to know from this type of a question is that whether you are adaptable motivation there can be lack of inspiration a lot of things can happen and you will uh, you cannot throw duster on the person and tell that come on listen to me i am the physics professor so the basic uh, thing that happens is that you need to understand the problem and immediately change the tactics of your lesson plan either engaging into something okay the next question which comes is that if a student asked you about a concept that you have never taught now how we are going to react to this situation now see this is something which is very common i mean to say uh, this is not that only in physics but because we are talking about physics this is common to any part of a teaching what the recruiter wants to know what is the inter why the interviewer is asking is all about is that how do you react to this situation one is that you can be smartly avoiding that that is not being done because you are a teacher second thing is that you react you 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 tell that you are not the right uh, person to uh, you know ask a question to your teacher or professor because uh, that is not done but neither of these things would really work out what is going on to work out is that remember that you are not the key to the answer it is not that you have to know everything you know big scientists big physicists astronomers philosophers they also have failed so the basic thing that you have to keep it in mind that you are not the key to the answer and it is absolutely fine that you will fail it is absolutely fine that there are uh, things that you really really do not know so one thing is that you can always ask the students to find out the answer and acknowledge i really don't know the second thing what you can do is that you can tell them yes i really don't know because this is something quite new and thank you for asking this kind of a question i will go back to your studies research it and come back with a proper answer see what the recruiter wants to know is that given such a situation this is this has happened in the day when i was facing i was looking over the interviews that this is a time when you need to be very cool you have to get hold of your senses don't get angry that is a kind of an attitude your temperament which reflects and it is okay to make a mistake it is okay that you your lessons are not going uh, as per the plan and it is all okay that you really don't know anything given all those situation what happens is that you really go back and you understand you explore and then you come back with the answer thing which comes up is that what would you do if you realized you made a mistake on your lesson plan this is also quite common i think the other question and this is quite related to each other what would you do if you really do have made a mistake in the lesson plan all you need to do is that you need to acknowledge you need to say that yes that's fine i made a mistake absolutely that's okay and you need to acknowledge and go ahead that is the only way again remember this is a question which the recruiter generally asks you just to test and to test your temperament okay do you have any suggestions for ways to improve the physics curriculum now this is something which the recruiter is asking why he or she is asking you is that wants to test whether you can really uh, have the innovative capacity in order to improve the curriculum so here is an answer is that hands on learning you can incorporate definitely that would be a good suggestion 
Building models of physical systems, you know, that is quite common even in schools I see when you are uh, doing with STEM etc. Robos, drones, these are very common nowadays. So you can build uh, models of physics and uh, physical system. Real world applications of the mater material that they learn. Absolutely. As I was telling that physics is all about learning and knowing the world as it behaves. So definitely this would be something which would be related to the real world. So use certain examples, use certain ideas where you can understand and explore the real world. Then comes an environment where students feel uh, comfortable. Absolutely because otherwise why will the students uh, engage in such kinds of discussion? Asking questions and engaging in discussion. Now as you see this is something very common. Uh, in India and outside India, good teachers or good schools always engage in a kind of a curriculum. They always engage in a kind of a discussion. Until discussion is being done, how can you proceed, progress and upskill yourself? There won't ever be a relationship between the student and the teacher. There won't be a relationship between the uh, knowing of the curriculum and taking you as a mentor. So these are the few points, hands-on learning experience, building physical models, uh, real life world uh, applications, giving a comfort to the students and engaging and asking questions. So these are the few points that do you have any suggestion for ways to improve. So that concludes our discussion of the first part of uh, what are the most important and crucial questions that are being asked when you are facing a physics teacher or jobs related to physics. Remember that I made this video because I have really observed those things. I found that these are crucial in terms of career as a data scientist, as a cryptographer or maybe... So first one, just to summarize, are you a certified physics teacher? Speaks about your certification, which would start first with the beginning, the recent certificate. Then what are the, some of the most important you have? That it would be more about communication. How do you engage yourself in students' lesson? You can use your lesson plans. What is your teaching philosophy? Is it's it is, so uh, you know, quizzes or interactive lessons, etc. Provide an example of time when you adapt yourself. So there are time when you really uh, the things and plans are not going accordingly. If a student asks you about the concept, concept that you have never taught, yes, acknowledge and then unlearn and relearn yourself. Do you have any suggestion for the physics? So you can tell up about these points that we have just talked about. Now I would be continuing the second part because it has been a. Uh, almost two three days where I went and talked and understood the interviews so I would be completing the second part where there are a few more physics questions and I hope you will like this series please let me know if you have any other uh, difficult questions which might uh, be very crucial in understanding I will put it up in the video please do subscribe to my channel physics for students like comment and let me know how I can further improve on this question coming up very soon on the second part we would be learning more about certain critical questions Thank you for watching this. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment, or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.